Faith Church International, a ministry that teaches you a better way of living. And those of you who are viewing this by way of webcast, if you desire prayer at this time, you can give us a call as the phone number appears across the screen. Or if you're viewing this uh, on television, you can call us. We are here and, uh, uh, to just assist you in whatever it is you need. Well, let's welcome this national and international audience. Well, we're still in our series of teachings of our covenant of wealth our covenant of wealth and one of the key things we've been saying really is if you don't believe you have a covenant of wealth you'll never be able to receive it if you don't believe it you can't receive it and in order for me uh, uh, to receive anything that God has for me I have to have the right mindset now that sounds very very simple uh, but it, this is very, very vital. If I don't believe that I have this covenant, then I can't receive it. And that's with anything in life. And in order for me to receive it or receive any of God's promises, I have to have the right mindset. Why? Because you can never go any higher than your level of thinking. And that's just a, a, a fact with anything in life. You can never go any higher than your level of thinking. And I stress that because sometimes people, you know, they want to go to that next level, but your mind won't let you go. You can't go beyond your level of thinking. You know, in other words, there's no way, unless supernatural, and this is basically what we're talking about, but there's no way in the world uh, you, you can be a scientist and you have no knowledge of trigonometry. You can't go any higher than your level of thinking. Impossible. Now, let's go to 3 John 1 and 2. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Now remember, anytime you're reading King James, whenever you see that ETH, I mean, that's the way King James spoke at that time. We don't speak that way. You know, we don't say, hello, how art thou? Or, you know, are, are, you, are, are you doing well if? We don't, we don't talk like that. Okay, but anytime you see ETH, because in other versions you don't see that. But the King James version, anytime you see ETH at the end of the word, it really means to continue. In other words, uh, uh, even as thy soul continues to prosper. So this lets me know this is not a one-time thing. It's a process. Continues to prosper. Now, another translation in 3 John 1 and 2, the disciples' literal New Testament, says it like this. May you prosper in all things just as your soul is prospering because you walk in the truth. Let me say that again. May you prosper in all things just as your soul is prospering because you walk in the truth. So in essence, uh, I need to fill my mind with the truth about prospering so that my mind can, what, lead me to that journey of prosperity. So I need the truth. And I stress that because I don't need to sacrifice hearing the truth to hear a compromise that can please my flesh. And I've seen that for years and years, especially in church and the body of Christ. We, we, we will sacrifice hearing the truth to hear something that is just please my flesh. You know, in other words, give me an excuse why I'm not prospering. Give me a religious excuse why I'm not healed. Give me a religious excuse why this is not my season yet. So now you don't ever want to sacrifice hearing the truth to hear a compromise that will please your flesh. You know, in other words, you know, I, 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 I will c compromise concerning giving. 
Now, we know Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. But instead of receiving that truth, I can compromise someone like saying, well, you know, the Lord understand. You know, he, he know you got bills. And he understand why you can't do certain things. And that will be, that would be pleasing to my flesh. So you don't ever want to sacrifice hearing the truth to hear a compromise to please your flesh. Because tales cannot make you free. Only the truth makes you free. And absolutely, your flesh won't like it. See, I've learned over the years to kind of train my flesh. When I hear something that's true and, and my flesh gets, crawl, gets all bent out of shape, good. That's one of the uh, 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 manifestations when you know you heard truth, when your flesh want to get mad. See, because truth will check your flesh. And your flesh will get mad. And make up a bunch of excuses. Now, they don't understand me. Because your flesh got checked. You know how it is in the natural. I don't know if you've ever been checked in your life. Somebody check you do something, they check you, and, and you almost get embarrassed. The word will check your flesh. Mm. Most Christians have a distorted image or understanding about prosperity and definitely a lack of knowledge about having this covenant of wealth. And sadly, most of that lack of knowledge has come through our leaders. You know, I've said for years, you can't do what you don't know. You know, and you can't go where you've never been exposed to. You know, I always, I give this example. Years ago, uh, I, I, I just didn't like trucks no, you know, like, uh, um, uh, well, definitely Escalades or, or, you know, truck cars, what I mean by that, you know. I just thought they, it just didn't seem right. And I, I used to say, there ain't no way in the I'd drive a truck. Especially, uh, oh, gosh, what's the, the truck? I can't think of that. It looked kind of like an Army truck. Hummers? Oh, man, I hated those. Because it looked like, that's an Army truck. Yeah. Now, the thing about it is, I really wasn't exposed to it. And sometimes we, we, can, we can say what we don't like because you've never been exposed to it. You know, you can say, I don't like steak, but you've never had it. And then I exposed myself because my first truck I got was a rodeo. And then I got in and I said, well, this is not bad at all. And then graduated from rodeo to Cadillac, you know. So you can't, you, you can't go where you have not been exposed to. That's like some folks say, I don't want no big house, because you never had one. You've never had one. So how do you know? Then you get in there and be looking like, man, I like this. You know, you like to run around and not, you know, you, you can step three feet and you're in the front door and the back door. So you can't go where you've never been exposed to. And without vision, you have no direction. And this is why I say, and it's not coming against leaders, but a lot of that in the body of Christ has become, is a reason because of leaders. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 14, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So now if I can't see, and I'm leading you, we both falling in the ditch. You know, if I'm telling you, you know, God doesn't heal, you're going to be in trouble. So you see, without the truth, you will be denied what belongs to you. The body of Christ has been destroyed or cut off because of lack of knowledge. Now, let's go over this one more time. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8.18. Deuteronomy 8.18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee, and if you got your own Bible, you put that thee, me, gives me power to get wealth. 
that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Now, we gave various translations to that, and I'm going to read it again. It's very important that you remember. The Message Bible in Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. Then another translation says, But remember Yahweh, your Elohim, is the one who makes you wealthy. He's confirming the promise which he swore to your ancestors. It's still in effect today. Now, I like that because you got a lot of folks say, well, that was in the Old Testament and the Old Covenant and all of that. But he's saying it's still in effect today. Now, when is today? Today. Now, if I read this in 1815, it would have been in effect 1815. But here we are in 2015, and it's still in effect today. The New Century Version says, remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you the power to become rich. Keeping the agreement he promised to your ancestors as it is today. Another translation, he is the one who gives you power to be successful. All right. Then the Common English Bible says he's the one who gives you the strength to be prosperous in order to establish the covenant he made with your ancestors, and that's how things stand right now. All right? Now, we also established, who was he talking to when he said ancestors? Let's go over it again, Genesis 12. Genesis 12, verse 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred. Uh, I, I, let, me, let, let me read that at an Amplified Bible. I, I always like to read the Amplified Bible in that first verse of Genesis 12 and 1. It says, Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abraham, Go for yourself, for your own advantage. See, when it, when it comes to the promises of God, you have to go for yourself. You can't sit around, have a meeting, and, 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 and say, shall we go? He said, see, that's something, you got to go for yourself. It's just like salvation. You know, there's, no, there's no, no family plan, per se, for salvation. You know, you got to go for yourself. If brother don't want to get saved, go for yourself. If your sister don't want to get healed, go for yourself. If your uncle want to stay on food stamps, go, and I ain't coming against it, go for yourself. You have to go for yourself, for your own advantage. Then it says, uh, uh, now Abraham said, the Lord said unto him, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Now obviously he's talking from a geographical standpoint, get away from this or that, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. In other words, you've got to get away, especially if you're moving in the things of God. And sometimes you have to get away, get, get away from what was familiar to you or maybe even how you was raised that's contrary to what God has said. In other words, maybe I was raised that, hey, uh, uh, everybody had an apartment. Nobody had their own house. So I got to get away from that if I want what God has for me. Maybe I was raised, hey, everybody in the family uh, uh, has this disease. Then this, spread, this runs in our family. So maybe I have to get away from that. Nobody in my family stayed married beyond three years. So now I've got to get away from that. So it's not just about geography. And I've, I've seen some people run with that scripture and say, that's why I had to lead a church, because just like Abraham, no, it's not just about geography. Because if you were a fool in Chicago, you would be a fool in Los Angeles. So it's not about geography. I had to feel I had to throw that out, because really, some folks will run with that scripture. It's time for me to go. I got to get away from, no, that, it's not about geography. All right? 
So he says, uh, 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 from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land, or we could say unto a life that I'm going to show you. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. This is the promise. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All families of the earth be blessed. Then verse 4 says, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. So Abram departed. Now, are you willing to leave where you're at to get to the life God wants you to have? Abram departed. He left. Are you willing to leave it to get to this, this covenant of wealth that we're talking about? Are you willing to leave other resources to get to this covenant of wealth? So now God promises to make thee a great nation, to bless thee, that thou shalt make thy name great. And he says, thou shalt be a blessing. That's part of the agreement. You shall be a blessing. Now remember, you can't be a blessing if you're not blessed. Now I'll get into later this in the, in the, in the teaching, but really, being blessed, and, and this, 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 this covenant of wealth is not for selfish reasons. I've taught for years, prosperity is not for selfish reasons. Part of this is so you can be a blessing. It's not for your four and no more. You know, I've said this for years. Any, any, any Christian who, and I've, and I've, I've seen this, I, I, you know, where, where Christians say, I don't need all that as long as I can just pay my bills and, 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 and uh, take care of my kids, I'm all right. That is one of the most selfish things for a Christian to say, to just think about your household and nothing else. When we're, we're, we're to be a blessing, part of your mandate as a Christian is to go into all the world and preach this gospel. You know, I think it's 2 Corinthians talking about if your gospel be hid, it is hid to them in the world. So that's very selfish of you to just want to be able to take care of you and your mama and big mama and that's it. Or when a Christian, so I know some of this comes out of lack of knowledge. When a Christian say, I, I got all that I need, that's selfish too. Because part of this, this covenant of the wealth, so you can be a blessing. You can't be a blessing if you don't have anything. And I, and I know we, you know, we, 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 we tend to, we, we pray for folk. You know, somebody have need, we pray, I pray for you. Well, that's good and fine. You know, but, but, but we're designed to be a blessing. To all families on the earth, I bless. Okay? Now. This was part of, 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 of the covenant, or really, that he gave, promise he gave to uh, uh, Abraham. Genesis 13 and 2, it explains uh, Abraham's status. Let's go there. 13th chapter of Genesis. Now, I know, I, know, I know I've said this, but I'm repeating this on purpose. 13th chapter of Genesis. Uh, verse 1 says, And Abraham went up out of Egypt, and he and his wife unto the land, uh, 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 all that he had, and lot with him unto the south. And Abram was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. All right, I missed one word on purpose. Very rich. Now, some people say, what's the difference? There is a difference. Rich and very rich. Very can mean extremely. It's in other words, uh, 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 the more you have, the more you can do. So he was very rich. All right? Very rich. Rich is not a worldly word. It didn't come from the devil. And I know for years that 
certain words, it, it, it's almost like it's taboo in the church. You start talking about rich, oh, oh, you know, it, it just make folk nervous. Or, or, or as if you're not saved. You know, talking about rich. But see, we don't have a problem with it in the world. We applaud it in the world. It's almost like we like to see it in the world. You know, but then when it comes to where it's supposed to be in the body of Christ, we, we get nervous about it. You know? But he says Abram was very rich. Very rich. Very rich. In silver and in gold. Very rich. If you're taking notes, write that down. I'm supposed to be very rich. And I would put capital letters. Capital V, capital E, capital R, capital Y, capital R-I-C-H. Highlight it. Very rich. Very rich. See, I know that's making, I feel the television audience is getting nervous. But I'm so serious on that. We, we, we choke in the world, but not, I mean, in the, in the church, but not in the world. You know, really, we, we, we expect the world that way, whether it's an athlete or an entertainer, we expect it. And, 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 and if your favorite athlete or favorite entertainer, if, if they was living in some sh shaggy place or some driving some bad car, You'll be like, man, what's wrong? What, what's wrong with them? We expect a certain lifestyle out of the athletes, the singers, the rappers, all of that. But then when it comes to the, the believers, then we get nervous. See, we got a distorted image. We got a distorted image. You know? We really, we, we, we have no problem with, with, with the rapper, and I ain't saying all rappers are bad, but, you know, those who, who, who just, just cussing and degrading women and everything else. And they've made millions and millions and ain't doing anything to, to encourage you. But then the believers who understand this, then we, 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 we think something wrong. You know, we, we got a distorted image of that. And especially if it's a preacher. Especially if it's a preacher. Because the first thing we'll think, if, 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 see, because we got a certain image. I know not some of you, you now, but I'm kind of going back years ago. Well, some still do. Certain image of the preacher, he could be all right, but if, 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 if his life seems above average, and then almost kind of elegant, or almost extravagant, then he's doing something wrong somewhere. I remember years ago, this is over, over, over 10 years ago, uh, and I remember, we, 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 yeah, this is definitely over 10 years ago. I think it was my first rose, I think. And this guy who didn't even go to the, to the church, he, he really kind of influenced uh, uh, one of my men at the time because we had had a church bus. And the church bus, it was an older, older bus. I don't even remember how, how we got it. I kind of forgot. And, but, but the church bus, it, it was okay. It wasn't all of that. And then my car is sitting there. And then he took the guy outside. Now, this is a guy who I, I ministered to him and his wife, helped save their marriage. He had some struggles and drugs, got him delivered. And then the guy comes and say, he said, he said, look at this. Look at the church bus and look at my car. Right. And the guy, was, he, he, and the guy who went here at the time, he was kind of a new Christian in a sense. But it kind of put some in his mind, like, and what, what was he trying to do? Trying to, as if I'm doing something wrong. You know, 
See, see and, and instead of looking like saying, hey, my leader know how to use his faith. You know, I use my faith for the ministry, but then that comes limited because it's still based on people and you all's faith too. See, we can have issues when we don't touch and agree, but I can touch and agree with me. You all see the difference? See, we can get it in the church and some of us believe and some of us not like them children of Israel. Twelve leaders, two believe, ten don't. And then the people get messed up, you know, and so we have some challenges here. But as far as me and my household, I don't need your faith. Hmm. I don't know how I got, got, got that. <laughs> Abraham was very rich, and you're supposed to be too. Let's go to the 13th chapter of Genesis. <clears throat> 13th chapter of Genesis, verse 14. Now, remember, I'm, I'm saying all of this as a reminder of, of who God made this promise to, and he said to your ancestors. 13th chapter of Genesis, verse 14, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, north, south, east, and west. For all the land which you see, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So he tells Abraham, listen, all the land, look, from, look, look in all directions. All the land that you see, I will give it. Now if it stopped right there, that's great because that's just to Abraham. But he says, but to thy seed forever. Now, you don't have to know the Hebrew to understand what forever means. Forever is forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, and the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. And then if you go to the 17th chapter of Genesis, 17th chapter of Genesis. And let's look at verse, verse 6, 17th chapter of Genesis, verse 6. It says, that I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Now keep in mind, everything that he's promising Abraham We've established before that this is for us too. And I will make thee exceeding fruit. You're supposed to be fruitful. Jesus even mentioned about that your fruit shall remain. Fruitful. And I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and to thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. It's not saying temporary, but everlasting. Once again, you don't have to know the Hebrew or the Greek to understand everlasting. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. In other words, the promise is I'm not just going to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but to your seed and after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein that thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, in other words, what's foreign right now. See, in other words, there is, there's a certain lifestyle that is foreign to us. Just like I gave the example earlier, getting a truck that was foreign to me because I wasn't exposed to it. So there is a certain lifestyle you're supposed to have that is foreign to you right now. And then all the land of Canaan. Canaan represents the best in the earth. For an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Now I like that. An everlasting possession. Now I said this a couple weeks ago. One of the things that the enemy doesn't want you to get your land. Because the moment you do, you'll possess it forever. 
You'll possess it forever. See, when you, when you rest on that promise that the land is my, I'm not going to be evicted. Nobody is taking my land. You know, we just came out of one of the worst recessions the last couple years ago, and a lot of folks, and I feel for them, a lot of folks lost their properties, lost their houses. Not me. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I ended up paying a lot less than what I started out with and can pay it off a lot quicker now. Everlasting possession. Now you can take that not just with the land, with everything. Nobody ain't repoing my car if you still got a car. No, nobody ain't repossessing your car. Everlasting possession. Write this down. No evictions on private property. Write this down too. You have private property that the enemy is sitting on. Hallelujah. Now, so the promise was not only to Abraham, but to his seed forever. Now, we've established who his seed is. Let's go to that again. Third chapter of Galatians. Third chapter of Galatians. And to save time, I'm not going to read it all. You all know this. this uh, it's talking about really what the, the promise that the promise was made to Abraham before any law. And I say that because you have a lot of people who say, well, this stuff was under the law. It had nothing to do with any law. This is long before any law. Amen. What God promised has nothing to do with the law. Amen. Third chapter of Galatians, uh, uh, let me just read it out of, uh, out of the voice translation. Third chapter of Galatians, beginning at verse 16, says, God's promises established a binding agreement with Abraham and his offspring. In the scriptures, it is carefully stated, and to your descendant, meaning one. Now, if you don't know this, you could just think it's really meaning to uh, Isaac, Jacob, and, and all his biological seed. No, 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 it never was meant for that. It says, to your descendant, meaning one, not to your descendants, meaning many, therefore, in these covenant promises, God was not referring to every son and daughter born into Abraham's family, but to the anointed one to come. The anointed one, so this had nothing to do with uh, 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 Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and so on and the rest, and all of the, the, the biological kids. And this never was about them. But the seed he was talking about was the anointed one to come. And we know that anointed one is Jesus. All right? Now, look down at verse 29. Or we, we might as well look at uh, verse 27. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, or the anointed one. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now, a lot of people saying, oh, that's for the Jew. Nah, scratch that out right now. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now verse 29, this, this is the one right here. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So let's stop it right there. If I'm in Christ, I'm Abraham's seed. If I'm saved, hey, I'm Abraham's seed. Now, we read all that stuff where God promised he'd give it to Abraham and to his seed. And here in the New Testament, he's saying, if you be in Christ, you're Abraham's seed. But it doesn't stop there. And heirs according to the promise. And what was the promise? All that we read in Genesis. 
Every, the promise that God made to Abraham, we are heirs to that promise. Whew. I know it takes time to renew our mind. See, this is a covenant. This is a covenant. And God said in one of, in one of the scriptures, he'll never alter or break his covenant. See, in other words, there's no such thing as God changed his mind. When he makes a covenant, there is no change in his mind. Because he's sworn against himself. So he can't, he, he can't say, ah, I changed my mind. Now, the only reason it hasn't been manifested in the body of Christ is either A, we don't know about it, or B, we just don't believe it. God has not changed his mind. The covenant is still here. And he's saying if we're in Christ, we are Abraham's seed. And we are heirs. In other words, we've inherited according to the promise that he made. All that you be blessed and very rich and all that uh, blessed to be able, all of that. All the promises that he made for you to be fruitful. I mean, to be honest, it's really nothing new because that was part of what he did with, with, with Adam, to be fruitful. He blessed them. Hallelujah. Wow. This is good stuff to me, I'm telling you. And I know it, it, it really does. It takes a renewal of the mind. See, you've got you, to get it in you that you have a right to this. See, we, we, we've, I don't want to say we've been robbed. We've been deceived. Somebody been telling us a lie for years. Somebody been telling us, especially those of us who have been in church for years. Some of us, and they folks didn't mean any harm, but they've just been telling us a lie that everything, anything great or good happen, wait to get to heaven. When there's a scripture that you can have heaven on earth. You know, earth is just about just struggles and strain and hardships and, and, and one day when we get to heaven. Now that sounds good if I'm 119 years old. But that don't sound good when I'm 21 years old. That all of my life is just stress, strain, and struggle. And anything great going to happen is when I get to heaven. And that's why you got a lot of folks, some folks, they don't, don't want to get saved today, either about to die or old. See, we've been, we've been, somebody, we've been lied to. You know, that, that, you know, we read these scriptures, we hear these scriptures, and it's almost like we read them like as if that's somebody else's life. That happened for them but not for us. Yeah, Abraham was very rich, but that's not for me. Yeah, the woman with this blood for 12 years, she got a healing and a holding, but that's not for me. We read these scriptures, he'll give you peace that passes all understanding, but that's not really for me. See, we, 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 we've got to, to a point where we read the scriptures like it's just some book to, to just encourage us, to just give us strength for another day's journey. It's not about no another day's journey. If I can just get, if I can just get, get, get through this day. See, that's what I call that survival mode. And we were never designed to, su designed to survive. So we've been lied to. We've been deceived. What Malcolm X said, we've been bamboozled. Hoodwink. Never mind, never mind, never mind. So now, if you don't believe you're an heir to this covenant, then you can't receive it. All right? Now, let's go back to 3 John 1 and 2. I know I'm repeating this because the more you hear it, the more it gets in your system. You, you got to keep it, because if you don't keep hearing this, you know, you hear it today and that's it. You, you got to get this in your system. Where it gets in your belief, where you believe this. 
And see, once you start believing it, then it changes your perception on stuff. And you'll realize, hey, I have been deceived all these years. And I am an heir to this stuff. I ain't supposed to be living like this. See, and then it ain't going to be business as usual anymore. You're like, no, this is wrong. I am, this is, I, no, mm -mm. I am not supposed to be living, I'm not supposed to be living like this. See, when you get exposed to this and it really gets, it, like I said, it's not for selfish reasons. Now, if you don't have a love for God, then it will become a selfish reason. See, it ain't, it's not, see, e even when we're talking about being very rich, houses and lands and all, once again, that's just not for you and your personal portfolio. So you can get to the family reunion. They say, hey, what you been up? Because oh, I'm living in my house in Florida. Then I fly to Jamaica. Then I, you know, no, it ain't for that. It's like you get to the family reunion, they say, what you been up? Because you've been like, you know what? I fed 10,000 people last month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's this man in a, had a family, had five kids, a wife. He lost his job. They were just about to get put out. And the Spirit of the Lord led me there, and I paid the man's rent, the family's rent for a whole year. I gave away 10 cars last year. See, that's what it's about. See, if you don't have the, the mission on your mind, you will abuse the money. See, that's why I don't get bothered by folks or nothing, because I know where my heart is. And I always tell anybody, say, before you start accusing me, I show you my checkbook. Where my money has spread it around the world. Because that's what it's for. All right. What did I say we go back to? Third John? Okay, let, 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 let's go. 3 John 1 and 2. Uh, we said one of the first key, keys in putting yourself in position to receive your covenant is this part of uh, understanding this prosperity and how to get there. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now, um, we said uh, prosperity begins in the soul. It begins in your mind. In other words, the key to any level of prosperity in your life is based on your mindset, based on your perception, your beliefs, or just how you think, because you can never go beyond how you think. Never. You know, uh, before you get to that next level, I always say that, you're going to have to think on it. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, so he becomes. Well, you're going to always move in the direction of what you think about the most. See, that's why it's important that we renew our minds, get our thinking together concerning this, then our life is going to go in that direction. See, your life is not going to go in the direction that your mind is not. Your mind, your, it, really, your mind is, I call it like the control center. It has to be there. You know, it's, and it's with anything in life. You know what some people be saying, Pastor, I just have a hard time saving money. Yeah, I believe you. You know why? Because it's not there. Even though you know in your heart you should be saving money. You are not supposed to blow everything. But the problem is, it's not here. And you may even try to save. But if it's not there, you're not going to go in that direction. That's with anything. Uh, I, I, you know, I know some folks who, who marry and say, I just try to be faithful to my spouse. Well, I believe you try. But if faithfulness is not there, you may be faithful three months, maybe six. 
maybe a whole year. But eventually, you're going to get unfaithful. Because you can't go where your mind is not. No matter, you can try all you want. It goes the same with people in church. I, I used to run into people and say, Pastor, I know I need to come to church. I'm here. But if your mind is not there, you know, if your mind has not been programmed to be at church every Sunday, it shouldn't be difficult, but it is if your mind is not there. Maybe your mind just programmed to be at church once a month, and that's why we see you once a month. Because you can't go where your mind is not. And a person may try. They'll be on a roll. They didn't came two straight Sundays. Three, ooh. Now you came a whole month, four. Now you think, it, but if you have not changed that mindset, it'll stop. And you know generally what happens with a person? If, if, they, if that mindset has been changed and somehow they made it four straight months, or four straight weeks of coming, more than likely you won't see them for another four weeks. Because you gotta make up what some you did that's not a part of the usual pattern. I mean, you think about it. That happens to folk, really. People who say they're going to start coming, and they start doing that. It could be two months. And then if they have not changed it, they are going to come this Sunday, and before you know it, two months have went by. Check the records on that. I know what I'm talking about. You can't go beyond your thinker. That's a law. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So he becomes. Uh, we also said uh, the main reason or what separates the prosperous from the poor is how they think and what they believe. Most decisions in life is based on what's been programmed or what's been set in your believing system. In other words, uh, when you think a certain way, you're going to act a certain way. Your belief directly affects how you perceive things. And we all know your perception becomes your reality. You know, how do you perceive things? How, how do you even perceive wealth? You know, what is your perception of that? And most of us, to, to have it, if we even visualize that, most of us think there's, there's only a few ways we get it. I don't think too many of us think about somebody dying because most of us don't know anybody who got that kind of wealth to die that will leave it to, leave it to us. Because some of you, you're, you're, the, you're the richest in your family. I don't know if some of y'all call it. Pastor, I'm the richest. I, I, I got $2. You're right. Everybody else got negative $2. So now, Scripture says, saying you may prosper and be in health even or according to how your soul, your mindset prospers. Now remember this word uh, uh, prosper, it means to succeed, to thrive, it means success, it means favorable. Now when we talk about prosperity, remember prosperity is not just limited to finances, so get that out of your mind. That's part of it, but it's not just limited to that. When we talk about being prosperous, we're not just talking about uh, from a material standpoint. Okay? Uh, uh, uh. In other words, to be prosperous means you're prosperous in your health. You know, a prosperous, prosperous health is healed. I'm healthy. See, when you're healthy, you're prosperous. Uh, uh, prosperous in your mind. You're not all confused. You know, there are a lot of folks who, who have confused mind. No rest, no peace, nothing. So when we're talking about prosperity, it's not just limited to, to, to finances and things, but, but pros, prosperity in, in, in your health, in your mind, in your family. To have a prosperous family, everybody they just hate each other. Everybody cussing each other out. Nobody likes to see each other come around. Somebody get a raise, you jealous. Okay, uh, your ministry, your assignment, your relationships, 
you know, prosperous in relationship, where, where, you, where you, you are a likable person. You like people, and people like you. And a lot of folks, uh, uh, they, they are poor in that area, poor relationships. You know. See, I always wonder for years with, with some people when they say, well, I just have no friend. I understand we can all define friends as different things, but you don't have nobody? Are you friendly to anybody? See, sometimes we have to look and say, I mean, they have nobody like me. Do you like people? You know, if, especially we say, if you should be a person that folks want to be around. Something is wrong. Nobody wants to be around you. That folks like being around you. So prosperous in your family, your ministry, your assignment, your relationships, your job. And we're not just talking fine, fine, but even, you know, you're prospering on your job. You don't like just dread going to work. Well, that's another lesson for another time. Sometimes you may need to investigate that. Like, Lord, is this what I'm supposed to be? Because if this is my son, then, you know, young people dread, oh, got to go to work. Oh, I'm only here for the paycheck. See, you got to be careful with that. Prospering in your business dealings, really anything that involves your life. See, so don't just limit it to money. You know, I, I think we talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago. Part of the ministry of Jesus, and I think it's Luke 4 when he says, Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he kind of defined who the poor is. The poor is not all, the poor is really uh, someone that's lacking. And it's not just about money. A person can have $50 million in a bank account, but still be poor. You know, in other words, you have bad health. You, just, you, you still poor, bad health, just with $50 million. You could be lacking in your mindset, just different things. So this whole thing about prosper, it's not just about finances. It includes it. Now, don't nobody get spiritual and want to take that part out as if one is less important than the other. Now, to me, they're all equal. Mm -mm, that didn't go over too well. They're all equal. Just as much as I want my health, I want the finances. Just as much as I want the finances, I want the peace. You know, and we've got to treat it. It's like what I call, it's all pieces to a pie. You know, that's what makes us whole. You know, that's what peace, shalom is about. That's what it means, nothing missing, nothing broken. See, I don't have shalom, I don't have peace if something is missing. You know, I got the $50 million, but my health is missing. I'm not whole. I am healthy and got peace of mind, but I still got to have for food stamp. I'm not whole. I can have the money, have the health, but my relationships I jacked up. I'm not whole. So we're not just talking about one area. We're talking about all areas. And don't, don't, and don't, don't let religion try to take one out. Because I know people say that, you know, as long as I got my peace, I don't, I don't need nothing else and all that religious stuff. You know, we've even wrote songs, you know. I may not have the money to this or that, but I got my joy, whatever that means. And we established in Lamentation 317 that I forgot, I don't have no peace because I forgot my prosperity. Some of us ain't got no peace because you ain't got no money. Now, I know religious, see, I, I felt that. I felt it. See, because we, once again, we've been deceived. And thinking there's either one or the other. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. It was never a choice. Man made it a choice, one or the other. Don't songwriters don't write me. I'm just, you know. It, it was never options. 
We were to have it all according to what he said. And I see that religious mind, I feel it. Well, I'd rather have you. Well, well, well what, what does that even mean? I'd rather have Jesus. What, what, what do you mean by that? You'd rather have what? I'd rather have Jesus. What, what are you saying? See, we can say things and then somebody asks you, tell me exactly what that means. I'd rather have, well, I'd rather have Jesus in my life. Oh, okay, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I, 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 I'd rather have him in, in my life. What? And all the riches in the world, I'd rather have Jesus. Tell me what that means. Where is he at? He in my heart. All right, he in your heart. Your rent do too, ain't it? Go, 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 go tell Mr. Charlie, the landlord, I got Jesus. And let's see, how, see what happened. Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just being realistic. Sometimes we've said something and we've embraced things and nobody, no one ever challenged us on it because it sounds so religious and so right. And it really was an excuse to try to make us feel better for the lack. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me, oh gosh, oh man, I labored on something too long, all right. Now, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now we said this word prospers, thy soul prospers, it's a little different than succeed, thrive, success, favorable, and all of that. But in the original Greek, it literally means this, this word prospers is as your soul prospers, to grant a prosperous and expeditious journey to grant a prosperous and expeditious journey. In other words, it also means to lead by a direct and easy way. In other words, it's not supposed to be difficult to prosper, providing if you're led. Or it also means to cause to prosper. So in other words, this is basically saying it takes the soul to lead you on the journey of prosperity. It takes the soul. As I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, but even as your soul prospers. And remember, prosper means to grant a prosperous, quick journey. Prosperity is a journey. And in order to get on that journey, my soul, my mindset, is going to have to lead me there. So now, since the soul leads me to the journey, then could it be the reason some of our lives are not prospering is because our mind has not led us there. And that's just true. Because you can't go somewhere where it's not here. You know, if you still have a poverty mindset, it's going to keep you on the journey of poverty. If you got a mindset of I'm sick all the time, it's going to keep you on that journey of being sick all the time. If you got a mindset of I'm, I'm, uh, every Friday I'm depressed, it's going to keep you on that journey of Friday depression. See, we have to change that with everything. It goes back to what I said earlier about that job. A lot of folks dread Monday. Why are folks so happy to the weekend and dread Monday? Because that's the journey your mind is on. Your mind is on the journey. I'm happy to when the weekend come, but then when Monday come, oh. You change that mindset, it won't make a difference. Friday or Monday, what's the difference? I know I lost 90% of you on that. It's the mindset. So you can't go to a place where your mind has never been. And that's the key to, to getting on the, the, the journey of prosperity. Your mind has got to lead you there. 
If it's not that, you're not, and you can try all you want. That's why you have a lot of folks uh, who try, and even some Christians, what we call them get rich scheme, just, 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 just quick get rich. And the Bible talks against all of that. You know, you, you don't haste to be rich. You don't do that. These get, get rich quick schemes. And that's another trick for the devil to mess you up. See, because your mind ain't that. So we, we want a quick, you know. That's why folks play the lottery. Boy, if I can just hit, if I can just get them numbers. Or gamble, or go to the race, whatever it is. Because that's that mindset. Nobody in here. That's that mindset, you know. See, you can't get on that journey until you change this. Now, I'm not talking about positive thinking or none of that. Now, we all know that I, we've got to change, renew our minds with the truth. And the truth is the word of God. You know, not, not with no, no schemes and no get rich schemes and no this or that and and, and all of that, or, or some of us can't see prosperity unless you get this certain type of job and all of that other kind of stuff. No. I got to change my mindset. All right? Uh, we also said, and I'm going to end, your soul cannot lead you to the prosperous journey if you're still committed to holding on to anything that resembles lack. Your soul, your mindset, it's not going to lead you to that prosperous journey if you're still committed to holding on to anything that resembles lack. Now, we all know certain things that resembles lack. And if I'm still committed to it, holding on to it, my, 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 you know, uh, my mindset is not going to lead me there. I've got to change that way of thinking. Got to, because if, if you don't, it's not going to happen. You can wish it all you want, and it, is, but I, and it takes time. See, that's another area. Most believers don't, they don't want to invest in this, invest in themselves, invest in, in, their, in their, their spirit and renewing our, their minds with the word. Most people, really, not with this group. But most folks, the only investment they make in it is when they come to church. And if you come on Sunday and Wednesday according to our service, that's, that's, with a lot of folks, that's it. And that shouldn't, def, that shouldn't be it at all. See, what I learned tonight, then I take this, take this with me. Every day, get it, because I, I, I'm changing my believing system. And it doesn't, have, like I said, it's not overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. Because depending on how old you are, we, we've got a lot of stuff that's been in us since we were small. And it takes time to get that, that stuff out of you, get away from, from, from that other way of thinking. And then get this in here. And it takes time to do that. But now how fast is it going to come? That's according to you. You know. I always say with anybody, how, how bad do you want it? You know, how bad do you want it? You want something different, you're going to have to do something different. If you don't want no change, keep doing what you're doing. You know, but that mindset is very, very key, and that's with anything in life. You, you, you've got to change your perception about it, and you do it through the Word of God. I'm out of time. I picked this up on Sunday. Those of you who've been viewing this, as always, once again, if you desire prayer or if you'd like to call us, if you'd like really a copy of this entire teaching, give us a call uh, as the phone number appears across the screen or even write us if you like. We'll see you on Sunday, 1230 Central Standard Time.